Hello, I'm Terry. This year, I have applied to over 285 game dev jobs. Now that wasn't easy to do. In the meantime, I've had two other part-time jobs to help me stay afloat, and I would submit stuff, you know, before I went to work or right before I went to bed. Sometimes I didn't think that I could do it, but I stuck with it, and look at me now. I'm still unemployed. Now at this point, most people would probably just give up. And you know what? Those people have got the right idea. I'm giving up. This is bullshit. Are you kidding me? 285. 285. It's not even October yet. I'm not going to be spending spooky seasons sending out my goddamn resume again. Are you kidding me? No. I'm going to be out there tricking and treating and pop my goddamn pussy like a respectable adult. Anyway, now I'm going to play Townscaper until I feel better. Ugh, let me tell you something. If this pandemic has been making your butthole pucker, and you just want to feel something again, but you can't afford Animal Crossing because that shit's kind of expensive, let's be honest, then you should definitely pick up Townscaper by Oscar Stahlberg. This thing is so amazing. It's just so easy and... It's just a little toy where you make towns and I just need this right now. Okay, so I'm thinking I'm going to do like a little village thing. I don't really know how to make grass. Okay, now I know how to make grass and that's like a lot of work. So we're gonna save that to the end. We are, I'm just gonna start with like a main building here and then I will make some side buildings and I want it to be like a like a farmhouse, like a cottagey type of thing. There'll be like cottages here and cottages here. And this is a single cottage for Greg, who, you know, at last year's summer formal accidentally got drunk and uh, dropped his pants in front of everybody and he has been ostracized by the community. So that's where Greg lives now. And this could be like a gazebo and this could be like a cool main building. I like this. Honestly, the stuff that the Townscaper community has been making with this tool is absolutely insane. It's it's so incredible and just really fun to honestly scroll through even if you don't have the game. Um, and I'm sure looking at some of that stuff, you're wondering like, wow, Terry, um, uh, your stuff looks pretty basic, man, compared to the rest of this, are you gonna use this video as like a tutorial to make something actually cool? Uh, and the answer is no. And you're like, well, why are you recording this? And I'm like, I don't know, please stop talking to me. Okay, so if I want to make grass, apparently I have to make like a big walled area. Oh, this is taking. Here we go, and uh, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> wow, okay, wow, okay, all right, Oscar, sir, I take it back. This is yeah, that felt I felt something, and I have you to to thank for that. <sighs> It's not much, but it's a pretty good town if I do say so myself. I'm pretty proud of it. So, um... What am I <laughs> going to do for the rest of the... <clears throat> for the rest of the day? You know what? Let's do a paint over. That's fun, right? My vision for this paint over is to use the townscaper town that I made as a base and then paint a chateau-esque building on top of it and it'll look really cool. For those of you unaware of the beautiful French chateau-esque architectural style, I will not tell you anything about it in this video because I am 
how you say, uh, a stupid American. I have no morals, no style, no education. I did terrible French impersonation without shame or impunity. These are the three brushes that I'm using. This is just a regular sketching pencil. Uh, this is a solid brush, solid round brush and I added a little pressure sensitivity on that. This is a kind of watercolor gouache brush just for like soft underpainting stuff. And yeah, that's straight up all that I'm gonna use. I'm gonna keep this simple. We're gonna make a quick sketch over the base so that I have like a general idea of the little changes that I wanna make to the architecture. Okay, so I do wanna point out here before I continue, this building is not technically to scale. I will be exaggerating a lot of the features. Uh, you know, I'm making the roof tiles bigger than they would normally be, and like a lot of the trimming I'm not getting super detailed. I'm just keeping it nice and big, and that's because I think I'm approaching this from a game developer's perspective where this would be like a game environment. And if you're looking at it from above, like a high distance, you want it to be nice and bold and readable. And also, it's a lot less work. So that's that. And of course, the final setup step for this painting is to add a Pazu for scale reference. First, I wanted to block in the color. I wanted the roofs to be kind of a gray blue. I wanted the trim to be sort of like this tan pale yellow and I wanted the base to be red brick. So I just blocked that in with my literal best friend, the polygonal lasso tool. She is the mother I never had. She is the sister that everybody wants. She is the friend that we all deserve. And I don't know a better tool. I don't know a better tool. Okay, so then I started by doing a test on this building here. Uh, it's just like a small side building, but it has all the components, so I was able to just kind of feel out how I wanted to approach this. And I've also decided to convert this building here into a greenhouse. I use the Royal Greenhouses of Lakin as inspiration. They are these gorgeous uh, greenhouses in, I think, um, somewhere in Europe. <laughs> but they're like this gorgeous rusted copper green. And I love the framing and those glass panels. And I think this is Victorian. I don't think this is Chateau-esque. But I am going to mix these puppies up because I don't respect culture. My digital painting technique is I paint dark to light. Um, because that is just like generally the pattern that uh, my emotions are as the day goes on. I start out, you know, pretty grumpy because not I don't really like waking up on time and then like the later it gets, it's like, okay, I think I think I can probably do this. I can take the day on and then I have to go to sleep immediately after. So what I really like to do before I paint any of the highlights on, you see like I've blocked everything in, in the shadow color, um, is I will do this quick little uh, sketch here to outline like where I want the shadows to be. I just kind of roughly calculate where those are going to fall and then make a line there. So then I won't paint the highlights in those spaces and I'll give it a little bit of a different treatment. So I want the roof to be dragon scale. I did like some quick underpainting here. Then I just filled in the top to give the edges a bit of a pop and that should do it for the roof. So the way that I did the trim was I took like this nice fun highlight, a uh, yellowy color to offset kind of that brick, dark kind of rusty uh, brown. <laughs> I forgot what I forgot the word for brown and yeah I just kind of laid it on top there what I'd like to do is kind of just get some slightly you know it's the same level of brightness but I will kind of just offset uh, the hue a little bit and that'll give it kind of a cool weathered um, ah! 
And that'll give it a cool kind of like weathered uh, effect. How I did bricks is, I'm very proud of this. This is ingenious. All I did, at first I thought I was gonna make like all the bricks like 3D and they would be popping out and that I realized was like way too much fucking work. So what I did is I just lined in with uh, the color of sort of like, I guess the cement or the, what is that called? You know, like the sticky stuff that's like in between bricks. I, I think that's cement. <laughs> Sorry to all the builders out there. Anyway, I used that and all I did was just like draw the lines in, like, you know, like a brick pattern, a, a typical brick pattern. Oh, I bet that probably has like a cool name too, which I don't know. Anyway, because the underpainting with that watercolor brush was so varied, just adding the lines there kind of makes it look already like each brick is already its own color and a little bit different. But to add the final touch, I will color pick uh, somewhere on each individual brick and you don't have to do this for every brick but I color pick and then I like fill in the entire brick area with just a hard brush and that makes each brick look individually placed and you know of course I clean up those lines so it doesn't look quite so drawn on super super easy uh, if you're doing it on just one wall but I did it on like 20 walls so it took me like an hour to do. Normally I feel like this would be a really tedious process for me, but I don't know, I just kind of kicked back and got into the zone. It's just a very chill, relaxing thing if you don't focus on it too much. And the cool thing was that like, meanwhile, while I was painting this whole house, I wanted to just, you know, get inspiration. So I was also watching like, all of the Jane Austen movies that had ever been made. Do you ever just like get so into cottage core that like your armpits start to smell like linen and bath water like that <laughs> that's where it was <laughs> now watching as many movies in this genre that i did of course this is where i learned the truth about actor tom hollander right off the bat i started with pride and prejudice like the the most recent one with kira knightley Tom Hollander, for those of you who don't know, he played the Reverend in that particular movie. And I didn't think much of it, you know, it was like a, just a bit part, not entirely central to the story. After Pride and Prejudice, I went in and watched Dr. Thorne, which was, I believe, a BBC produced television series, also in that Victorian era. And who do I see playing the lead character? It's actor Tom Hollander. He plays the doctor. At this point, I started to get a little bit sus. I also remember Tom Hollander being uh, one of the baddies in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. So I'm very suspicious at this point. I'm seeing Tom Hollander everywhere and I'm really concerned. Um, like what's going on? Now the third series I watch after this is Wives and Daughters. Now, this show was not produced, uh, you know, after the 2000s, you know, like these movies that I'm watching are pretty recent, like 2010 to 2018-ish. Wives and Daughters was made like late 1990s. And I'm like, there's no way that Tom Hollander is gonna be <laughs> in this series. Episode one, you know, 52 minutes and 37 seconds. I'm like, okay, we might be in the clear. But then, <laughs> 52, 52 minutes and 38 seconds into the show. Tom Hollander, Tom Hollander just comes in out of nowhere. It was so, I literally had to stop painting because I was gasping. <laughs> Uh, but you know, the truth of the matter is, this is what I've discovered, is that Tom Hollander, for sure, for sure, has like some kind of dark magic, deal with the devil, you know, sort of pact, where it's like, it doesn't matter what studio, it does not matter like what production company, n none of that matters. Like contracts, nonsense. If you are making a Victorian era film, Tom Hollander will be appearing in it. And he's like, you know, you don't have to give me a main part. In fact, it's better if you don't because the kinds of forces that I am dealing with here don't really like, you know, we can't really call attention to them. But I will be in your production and it's just out of your control. So that that's the truth. 
And I have to live with that now, but you know what? I got some great bricks out of it, so I can't complain. The good news is you can use this technique for other places too, like I used it on the flagstone walkway uh, leading up to the building. I just did it in gray, and of course I didn't use the brick pattern. I tried to make it look kind of like individual chips of stone that had sort of broken off somewhat naturally. Uh, so yeah, literally just did the kind of a rough underpainting, the lines color picked for individual ones and then painted them in. And then the final detail that I added to kind of make it extra was I hand painted in these kind of wavy lines on some of the stones because I was feeling kind of patriotic and just wanted to be reminded of our flag. All right, so I finished up the rest of the roof tiles. Nothing really to add there except for some of them. And I do this particularly on the roof, but in a few other places on the building as well. A green underpainting, just a touch, just in the corners, you know, because I wanted to make it look mossy. Uh, you know how these old houses be having asbestos in the walls and shit. You know, I just wanted to kick it up a notch, as uh, Emerald would say. I guess I could talk about how I did this bell tower, um, but I won't. It was just, you know, more trim. And honestly, it was a pain in the ass to do because all of those weird angles on those faces made it really hard to calculate light. And I'm pretty sure I fudged up some of it. And you know what? I don't want to pass on that tainted knowledge to you. So let's just move on to the good stuff, which is making the greenhouse. Oh my god, this this was like the highlight of this paint over for me because I just kind of, I just had fun with this. I drew the grating on, I just kind of sketched it out at first, and then I kind of strengthened the lines and turned them into those, um, turned them into like the metal um, railing frames. <laughs> What is it called? I don't even know how I could begin to uh, <laughs> Google this. <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> I just Googled um, <laughs> parts of architecture. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so whatever that is, I'm gonna call it like railing or whatever. I added some shading to the glass panels and kind of added like this sort of dripping um, texture to it because I've noticed when you look at, you know, old windows and stuff, that was kind of what I was looking at for reference is an old window, if it like rains or if there's any sort of moisture in the air, eventually there'll be like these little trickles of rust that come down on the glass and they look really cool. So I tried to imitate some of that. It's funny, while I was looking up like pictures of like old school greenhouses, I learned that there's this thing called an orangery. I don't know if you guys know this, but in those big royal greenhouses, people, it was very fashionable to keep a wing of the greenhouse for like oranges and fruit trees and stuff. And they would call it an orangery. And I can tell right away why that fell out of fashion because if you took me to your house and you like took me into like this greenhouse and you like looked me in the eye and you were like, this is my orangery, I would take the oranges off the tree, cut them in half and squirt the citric acid into your dumb, dumb eyes because it's probably like the worst word that I have ever, like it's, it's, it's worse than like moist or whatever people are mad about. I've already said it three times and I feel like not once, not twice, but thrice I have denied Jesus. So let's move on. Uh, the final step here, and this was a little bit experimental, probably honestly unnecessary, but I did want to try it out. I thought instead of painting the interior of the greenhouse and then drawing the railing in the glass over it, 
if I could paint the railing first and then using a masking technique, I would be able to show parts of the inside and then mask the rest out where the railing and you know some of the rusty parts of the glass would be. So it was just an experiment really, but I think it turned out good. All I did was just paint the, what I imagined would be like a very simple inside of the greenhouse. And since it is kind of vertical, I'm like, well, maybe there's like a little staircase here and there's a, you know, a tall tree that you can kind of explore the expanse of, you know, some beautiful romantic notion that will turn out to be almost completely erased. <laughs> uh, because when you see the final result, it's like the railing really takes away a lot of the details, which I was kind of bummed out about, but I still think that it looks good. Um, so yeah, once I had that layer painted on, all I did was take a layer mask and this just kind of paint in where the railing areas are. And it looks like the uh, layer that I just painted is now inside of the greenhouse. And yeah, just a few more details on this building and I finished. Uh, yeah, and, and that's the building. Bing, bam, boom. Dang, dog. I gotta say, shit looks sexy. You ever just like look at your own artwork and you're like, oh my God, I'm so good at this. Why won't anyone hire me? Why won't anyone hire me? And that, my friends, is how you do a paint over if you don't really aspire to do anything or be anything in your life. This has been the first of what I'm sure will be a wonderful series of videos uh, exploring unemployed game developer life. Thank you for watching and remember, if you want a job in the game dev industry, these videos will not even remotely help you. In fact, you should do everything in your power to avoid wasting the time that I have wasted falling into the pitfalls that have tripped up my titty. Do not emulate my life in any way. But by all means, uh, keep watching and I'll see you guys next time. I have neither fortune nor title, but I have some skill in saving lives. <laughs>